Excellent. Welcome to the Metasploit team demo meeting, uh, December 1st, end of the year. This will be our second to last demo meeting this year. Where does the time go? Uh, appreciate everybody joining us today. We've got some good stuff to cover this week, um, some good demos too, uh, with Alan Foster from our framework development team taking us through the framework bits and Jeffrey Martin from our Metasploit Pro team covering the commercial bits. Well, let's hop on in. We'll move along to the framework portion of the meeting and uh, I'll hand the mic over to Alan to take us through the framework bits. Yep, thanks Bruce. Awesome, uh, so new modules. Uh, community member Eric Winter contributed a new module for Horizont CMS, which is an arbitrary PHP file upload. Uh, we'll have a demo of this later. Our very own Will Vu has added a new Oracle WebLogic Server Administration Console Handle uh, exploit module, and this module targets a path traversal and Java class instantiation vulnerability within WebLogic. Uh, this module is capable of targeting uh, WebLogic running either Linda Linux or Windows. Community member Graham Robinson contributed a new module for Apache NiFi, and we'll have a demo of this later. Community member Graham Robinson also contributed a new RC module for the Kong Gateway Admin API. The Admin API by default, since version 0.12.0, is bound to localhost and therefore shouldn't be available externally. It is, however, possible to remove that restriction configuration. We'll have a demo of that later. Uh, continuing on with new modules, community member Hudi contributed a new module for unauthenticated remote code execution for WordPress simple flat list plugin via a file upload vulnerability. This impacts versions uh, 4.22 and below. We'll have a demo of this later. Community member Anas Anatasios uh, has contributed a new open media vault module, which gains RC via the sort field post parameter. And this impacts versions before 4.136 and 5.x, uh, before version 5.5.12 inclusive. Community member Petros Ribeiro and Redek Domanski have contributed a new module for the Rockwell Factory Talk View SE 2020. The new module chains five vulnerabilities to drop a file into the IS directory, resulting in command execution as the IIS user. Typically, this is IIS Apple, uh, default Apple. This exploit was used by the Flashback team, uh, which consists of both Pedro and Radek, and the Pwn to own Miami 2020 to win the EWS category. Neat. For Enhancements and features, uh, community member CHMOD 750 added a new cookie option to the SharePoint SSI Fustiate module, uh, which is primarily useful when SharePoint is authenticated through a web form. Um, our very own Grant Wilcox has made improvements to the secure CRT password gatherer module to improve stability. Um, just fixing some edge cases there, thanks. And community member Beacles has improved the Metasploit tip. Uh, which is I put on startup to actually wrap at 60 columns just to improve visual aesthetics. And community member Auxilius has updated the interpreters, upload and download functions to properly support expanding the local paths, e.g. with the tilled character. And for bug fixes, um, our very own Christoph uh, de la Ferrante has made improvements to the Ruby SMB gem to support an edge case with the zero login module, uh, specifically when the net BIOS name was of certain lengths. Our very own Jeffrey Martin has fixed a bug where the verbose output of jobs with the jobs minus V command and the persistence of jobs with the jobs minus capital P uh, would crash if auxiliary jobs were present. And our very own Christopher Gunley fixes a crash when the rhost HTTP URL option was used in conjunction with the check command, and that is currently still behind a feature flag, uh, which can be enabled with the Argos HTTP URL um, feature set command. And continuing bug fixes, a very own Spencer McIntyre has improved the user experience for the MS1710 Eternal Blue Ruby module to validate that if the target is running x64 or not, and will provide a failure message when targeting different architectures. A community member, Hudi contributed a bug fix for the brocade hash handling 
to support the dot character. And continue on with bug fixes again. Uh, community member Tim Wright has updated four Python shell payloads to be compatible with Python 3.4 and above while still retaining compatibility with 2.6 and above. Uh, Tim Wright has also contributed a fix for an edge case. We're running sessions minus U against an existing interpreter session would not work. Uh, this workflow is sometimes used by pen testers to create additional sessions on top of an existing interpreter session that has been previously opened. Uh, our very own Christopher Ganlis has also fixed an edge case in the SSH login module uh, to fix the scenario where the user may not have permissions to run the system info command. Um, and it now grisly falls back to the ver command instead, which should be available to all users. And as always, um, thank you for your contributions. And I'll pass over to Pierce to talk about CTF. Thanks, Al. Um, yeah, so we've got the, the latest installment of the Metasploit community CTF is happening this coming weekend with gameplay starting on Friday at 9 a.m. US Central Time. You can head over to metasploitctf.com and register now where you can join an existing team or create a new one uh, as slots are available, but they're, they're filling up. Uh, for details on recent framework activity, you can check out the weekly Metasploit wrap up uh, blog post at blog.rapid7.com. And uh, definitely as Alan said, thank you for everybody who helps with the Metasploit project to keep making it better. Appreciate that. Good. Thanks, Chris. Um, so for our first demo is the WordPress simple file list RC, uh, courtesy of Spencer McIntyre. Uh, so it looks like Spencer isn't able to, to get on today, uh, but I can go ahead and talk over it. Cool. Go ahead and start it up. Yeah, sure. Thanks. All right. All right, so this is an exploit for a WordPress plugin called simple file list. Uh, this Exploit module was contributed uh, by Hoodie. Um, so versions prior to 4.2.3 are vulnerable. Basically what happens is the plugin allows you to upload a file only if the file's extension is within the plugin's allow list. However, uh, an unauthenticated user can then rename the file without any checks on the extension and get code execution. And again, that is as an unauthenticated attacker. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Shelby. Um, so uh, this module is about uh, Horizon CMS, which is an open source content management system. Uh, so version 1.0.0 beta and prior are vulnerable to arbitrary file upload, which can be leveraged to get remote code execution. So please, can you go ahead and, and play, play the video? So we're going to go through the steps to actually uh, exploit this manually, just to show how easy it is. So we're going to uh, authenticate with the admin user. We need some specific permissions to use the file manager. So we have a user with a bit of permission like admin. Here is the file manager. We're going to upload um, a file, which is a PHP backdoor, a very classic backdoor. Um, here we go. Going to upload it. And as we can see, the application renamed the file, but we can rename, rename it back to the original name, which is very handy. Here we go. And access it directly from the storage location. Um, so yeah, this is very standard uh, attack. Um, we're gonna execute the command directly, uh, which is actually run um, in the context of the user that is running the the instance of Horizon CMS. Right, so the model is actually uh, doing the same thing, so the same steps. Uh, it will first try to obtain the Horizon T CMS version to check if it's vulnerable. It's, it's gonna get the CSRF token from the main login page. Then it's gonna 
uh, authenticates with the provided credentials and upload a PHP file, the backdoor, uh, which will be immediately renamed by the application, but the module will rename it back to its original name right after this. So we're going to set some options here with the same, the same admin user. There we go. Uh, set verbals as always to see what's going on. And uh, everything looks good. So we have the check option that is run automatically with uh, the, the um, process, the uh, exploit, uh, exploitation, and we got a meta session. So this module also has other targets. So the first one was a PHP in memory payload. We're going to use now the target number one, which is a Linux uh, dropper, and it works the same way. Right, that's it. Nice. Awesome. And another demo from Christoph, I believe, hopefully this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello again. Um, so Apache Nifi is a, a software used to automate the flow of data between software uh, systems. Uh, when the Nifi API is not properly secured, uh, it is possible to abuse some dangerous processors and execute arbitrary commands in the context of the user running the Apache Nifi instance. So by default, the installation uh, runs over HTTP and does not require authentication. So it is possible to set up an uh, authentication using an external provider like uh, LDAP or Kerberos. It's not an easy step, but uh, you can do it. And once the authentication is set up, it is possible to restrict access of an authenticated user. So you have to follow all those steps to actually secure the application. Without that, you can uh, configure, you can create, configure, and run commands using uh, some processor. The one the module is using is the execute process processor. So please, can you uh, rent the, the video? Thank you. Right, so here's, we, uh, here we have two instances. The first one is uh, running on Windows without authentication. So it's HTTP and uh, we're gonna exploit it using the, the same model without any other options than the remote host, local host. And uh, yep, that's it. So we're going to set the options now. So this is the default configuration. When you install it, there is no authentication. There we go. So we're also we also need to set the targets here, which is uh, Windows. So target number one. There we go. Oh, we're good to go. So we're gonna run the check and then run the exploit. There we go. So it creates a processor and execute a PowerShell command. Right, so we have a session here. It works great. So now we're gonna see what's going to happen on another instance I have installed here, which is on the Linux system and with authentication here. Here is the, the user I'm authenticated with. Uh, I created other users with some uh, access policies to restricted components like the processor we're going to create. And uh, so we need to set up a bit more options here. So first, the target zero, which is Linux. Uh, remote host is different. It's another instance. The remote port is different as well because it's running on uh, over SSL. So we have to set SSL as well. And uh, the user credentials. There you go. And I think we're good to go. Right. So we're gonna run it the same way. So first, um, 
we're going to run check and run the exploit. So same, same logic, it's going to create the processor, run it with a command and uh, clean everything. There we go. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Christoph. And we have a demo for the Kong Gateway Admin API RC module by Chris. Yeah, so this module was uh, developed by a community member, Graham Robinson. Uh, this exploit module uses the admin API to create a route, uh, then assigns a pre-function serverless plugin to that route. The plugin then will then run Lua code that is used to run a system command using os.execute. Uh, after execution, the route is then deleted, which also results in the plugin associated with the route being deleted as well. Uh, the admin API by default, since version uh, 0.12, is bound to localhost and therefore shouldn't be available externally. It is, however, possible to remove that restriction in the configuration. Uh, the documentation states Kong API's routing design allows uh, it to serve as a proxy for the admin itself. In this manner, Kong itself can be used to provide uh, fine-grained access can see <clears throat> control to the admin API. So yeah, just before we play the video, um, this, this module's readme was extremely good uh, and very helpful when doing testing. So I just want to say thank you to Green Robbins. That uh, was very helpful and very easy for whenever actually trying to get this stuff set up for testing. Uh, just another note, um, before we play the video, I have a lot of stuff set up in the background here because the Docker commands are quite fiddly to copy across, uh, I think just because of the uh, VM here. So I'm gonna have that actually up and running uh, just so that part of the demo, you don't think that's missing. So if you go ahead there on. Yeah, so here we have uh, our VM options and everything set up. Uh, we have our R host and L host that are required. Uh, here I'm just demonstrating that we have the Docker environment set up and we have curled it out uh, just to make sure we've got our 200 status. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and run the module here. Uh, one thing to note here, whenever we were testing the module, we were having some issues with our uh, race condition. Uh, we have implemented that second line there. You can see it, the right is not yet available. Try and again, this will actually give three attempts while sleeping it. Uh, we were having an issue where the right was being requested before it had actually been fully created. Uh, so that will actually try three times before killing the session. So just as we note there, uh, yeah. And that will just get you in uh, and then you'll have uh, be able to execute and work away on the target system then. So yeah, that's it. Awesome, thank you, Chris. And uh, we'll segue uh, from framework content to attacker KB. Uh, thank you, Alan, uh, for taking us through the framework content and uh, everybody for the demos. Those are great. I always appreciate that. Let's talk about attacker KB, the attacker knowledge base where you can learn about and discuss which bones matter and why. All you have to do is visit attackerkb.com. It's that easy. We've got a couple of demos today of uh, items the team's been working on. Uh, we'll start with uh, Jorge is going to show us exploited in the wild events. You could just press play there, Pierce. Cool. So good morning, everybody. Uh, so today I'll be showing you uh, what we've added recently to Attacker KB. We believe that reports of a vulnerability being exploited in the wild warrants an appearance on the activity feed for anyone to see. Um, so now once uh, a topic is reported as exploited in the wild, they will now appear uh, within the activity feed. So as you can see here, uh, it appears just as uh, any other sort of uh, event. And uh, should a report be deleted by an admin, the event will al also disappear from the activity feed. Um, that way, just in case there's any accidents or anything, uh, people won't need to worry about uh, leftover contents. Nice. That looks, uh, looks really handy. Uh... Any any questions for Jorge? All right, and uh, we'll round out our demos today with one from Matthew Kino. He's going to show us multiple value search filters. In the past, we introduced search filters that allowed you to specify and narrow the scope on uh, your search but you were limited to a single value for each of those particular filters. In this case, we've expanded some of these to allow you to specify multiple values. 
So for instance, I'm able to search for buffer overflow and get back a result set. Let's say I'm looking for something that I know is in the past two years or so. So I'm gonna add CV year 2020. Now in the past, this would have been the only option you could only do a single year, but it's expanded to allow us to provide multiple values for this filter, expanded to scope to 2020 and 2019 for the CV year. Uh, this is available on a couple of the filters where it makes sense. So let's say I also know that it was in the first three months of one of those years. So I can come in here and then continue to expand the scope on the search and see we're looking at uh, CVs that are assigned from year 2020 or 2019 that were disclosed in the first three months of the one of those years. And hopefully that'll help us narrow down what we're looking for. It's just a way to expand upon the search filter feature and allow our users to have uh, more flexibility in their filtering. So hopefully they'll enjoy that new feature. Well, that's it. That's that's our meeting for the week, uh, for the two weeks, I guess, is a better way to put it. Appreciate everybody joining. We'll uh, get the recordings up and post it out uh, this afternoon. Take care and have a good two weeks, y'all. Excellent.